if there's any bad news, it will cause markets also over the short term to somehow correct downward. If there's something also that would be a bit of good news, you would see also a push upward. I believe from a macro and a longer term perspective, there wouldn't be massive trend shifts also unless you see that fresh money coming back into the market. For markets to move higher, there has to be people willing to buy it at a higher price. Hey guys, so let's talk about the markets real quick. When we started the year, I mentioned that everything is still hinged on how inflation rates would be, how the Fed reacts on how those inflation rates would be, i.e. them raising rates to treat inflation. And those are the things that we should primarily watch for. That's what I've mentioned also before. When the Fed continues to raise rates, it continues to put more buy pressure on fixed income instruments because you get a lot of people who will earn a lot of money just by parking it in fixed income. And when that happens, it lessens the money that's circulating around in the stock market. If there's lesser money moving around in the stock market, the crypto market is highly connected to the stock market, then you have a lesser amount of money also that will be moving into the crypto market as well. It all goes hand in hand. Inflation, as compared to some points last year, it's generally better in the US versus where we were last year. However, the narrative hasn't changed. That's why you would see it from time and time again. If there's a semblance of good news, like CPI data being lower, you see the market being forward-looking, and then you see some pushes up in the market, similar to what we saw over the past few weeks. However, we're still not out of that current condition we are in. Rates are still high. They really haven't brought it down. There's really no quantitative easing yet. If there's any bad news, it will cause markets also over the short term to somehow correct downward. If there's something also that would be a bit of good news, you would see also a push upward. I believe from a macro in a longer term perspective, there wouldn't be massive trend shifts also unless you see that fresh money coming back into the market. For markets to move higher, there has to be people willing to buy it at a higher price. However, until the bond market remains to be attractive, then we may not really see large push-ups yet in the market. Everything will just be pretty much dependent on short-term news and short-term data, which will bring markets higher or lower from the short to midterm. So given all of this, I think nothing much should change in the way you should deal with your strategy. If you're the type of person who wants to nitpick and wants to look for companies that are very, very good over the long term, as long as their valuations are fairly correct for you, as long as their growth trajectory remains okay, meaning their steady base of customers, clients, or at least sales are still there, I think there should be nothing wrong with stacking and building a volume. However, I want to mention this also that from where we are right now, it's not as cheap as when there was a lot of fear a couple of months ago. Always remember this that in the world of investing, when there is massive fear around, it's where you can get massive discounts and that's where you can get a lot of things that are relatively cheaper. That theme hasn't really changed. For those who are following technicals, it's still the same thing. One of the reasons why also you're seeing bits and pieces of corrections is that it failed to break out from a strong resistance. And until we break out from that strong resistance, we could just be moving at this particular price range over the next few weeks and months as well. So fundamentals, stack in specific companies that you believe in its growth trajectory, that the underlying fundamental story hasn't changed. If you're following the technical narrative of it, again, to the corrections, progress just wait for the next support level and that could be an area for you to be able to add it should there be more positive news also and we see it start to break out that could be another narrative where you could add some more and you could see more upward pressure as well covid is almost behind us we're seeing the world starting to reopen again and if there's one positive indicator also as you see what's happening in China. They now started to reopen and like before they had a zero tolerance policy for COVID and China reopening, the second largest economy in the world, reopening is something that's good, not just from a tourism standpoint, which will benefit a lot of the countries where they would normally go into. The Philippines also, I believe, is one of them, but also from a business standpoint, as lockdown restrictions continually ease in China, then will open up more trade. Businesses will continue to thrive and start to get better and reopen. They had almost three full calendar years of COVID and we're seeing things really in a post-COVID world as well still remain. The war in Ukraine and in Russia isn't still over. And every year, there will be items also that will cause people to be more fearful. If you base your investment decisions on those things, then you may not be able to invest. You may not be able to take advantage of opportunities as well. So just stepped off the train. Uh, we walked for a bit. As I was saying, <laughs> there will be a lot of things that will 
somehow cause fear in the markets. <laughs> Regardless of what it is. What did you say, little Satosh? Were you saying something? Nothing? Did you make want to make a comment? No comment at all? So there will be a lot of things in the macro that will cause people to somehow either be bearish or be scared or you have to look at it also from this perspective when markets have gone up from a very long time by the way guys i'm gasping for air because this is quite steep and we still have a long way to go there will come a point in time also that if markets have pushed up for quite some time then investors somehow would want to take profits and any sign of bad news they would want to take out their gains off the table as well that's part of the game but what i'm saying is this there will be things that will cause you to be fearful if you don't act based on data conviction or your strategy then you won't be able also to position well always remember that there will still be an amount of risk that you may have to take or there will come a point in time where you will still have to enter based on a calculated decision even if it does not give you the assurance if it will be a good trade or not there will be points in time that there will be uncertainty in the markets but don't let that face you because that happens every single year would you wait for the markets to get bullish and become expensive before you start deploying or would you want to position when there's fear so that when it turns bullish you've already stacked and have the good position as well i'll keep you updated as we start to progress we're still far from the very very interesting run-ups that we saw in 2020 and 2021 by the way we're supposed to climb this castle over here still a great way of carrying a eight to nine kilogram baby while doing all of this i guess that's it this could be a time for you to be able to stack and position on assets and companies that are good this could be a time also where you could be more strategic on how you could possibly trade it I I hope that this is something that helped you and gave you the information as possible to navigate where we are. I'm gonna give you more video talking about the markets and the conditions and how you could weave through it and what you're supposed to do because all of this is cyclical. And I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. This is little Satoshi, very, very cool and relaxed while she's traversing this. And this is me, uh, very, very tired. Could have a long way to go, guys. See you all again soon. <laughs> For those who stayed up until the end, we're very near now. Little Satoshi is chill and good, but yeah, I'm super tired. But here we are. Thanks for staying, staying till the end, and watching this video.